Hey, Noah, how are you? I'm doing outstanding. Good. Uh, Mr. Famoletti, uh, I think we just kind of did a lot of email and telephone chatting as you got through the process, right? Yes, sir. Well, congratulations on uh, winning that three-year scholarship. Thank you, sir. And uh, you've accepted it to Hood, and we're tracking you coming in in the fall. Good so, here. So, um, you know, I don't know, maybe some other – cadets or pers prospective cadets might join us, but uh, I guess, you know, you've done a lot of the research, you know, you're far, you're pretty far along having won a three-year scholarship. So I just want to make sure you understand, you know, what that really means being a three-year advanced designee. And then I'll let you answer some questions, ask some questions as, if that's okay. That sounds great. All right. So the, the three-year scholarship is really a four-year scholarship, but your first year is kind of probationary. Okay. okay. So what that means is, and have you, have you gotten your packet from cadet command yet? Like the, the I, I have. Okay. So let's let this, uh, we're going to let Amy kind of join in here. Hi, Amy. Hi. Sorry. How are you? A minute. No, no problem. Yeah. So um, I was just talking to Noah uh, who's won a three year advanced designee scholarship and accepted it to hood. So he's a known <laughs> He's a known entity, um, so I was just kind of explaining to him the, the nuances of that three-year advanced designee scholarship. Um, and Noah, the, the biggest thing is that first year is really, uh, the word probationary is not really probably the best word, but it's, you're a cadet like everybody else. Um, and basically, if you meet all of the administrative and academic and, and medical requirements, then there should be no reason why at the beginning August of your sophomore year, which would be August of 2021, you'll sign your scholarship contract um, and your enlistment contract with the Army. And the Army will pay full tuition and fees at Hood. Um, you will get $1,200 a year split up into two increments of $600 for books and then for 10 months of the year, you'll get $420 stipend, um, which is, is pretty significant when you start adding, adding those numbers up. I mean, I just doing rough order of magnitude, a three-year scholarship at Hood College is probably worth to you upwards of $150,000 because what, what Hood will do is they don't have to give you as substantial of a financial aid package that they, they will give you a pretty, a, whatever they give you for your freshman year, because you're financially responsible for your freshman year. Okay. Your sophomore year, things are going to change because the reality changes. You're bringing full tuition and fees. So their financial aid package is probably going to reduce significantly, but what they do for our scholarship cadets is cover room and board. So your last three years of college are gonna be for all intents and purposes a free ride. Okay, now what you need to do in your freshman year is maintain a 2.5 GPA. Now I'm starting to get a little gray here and you see I got the, I'm retired army, I got the COVID beard going here, okay? <laughs> um, I'm here to tell you, okay? You have been admitted to Hood College you absolutely can get a 2.5 and probably much better than a 2.5. I mean, I'm just, it, it never ceases to amaze this old guy, uh, how the grades, is, I mean, that's your job. You're a student first. ROTC will come second. It, that's the way everybody, that's the way it is. Okay. And you've probably, have you met any cadets at Hood? Uh, yes, actually, before this whole thing, quarantine started, I've been going up there weekly for PT. I've met um, Captain Heron, Master Sergeant Bow, and a few other cadets. Oh, great. Now, Captain Heron might join us today. Um, so that's that's awesome. That You know Sergeant Bowell and Captain Herant, because Herant went to Hood, and he cracked the code. So obviously, you know, it can be done, and you too can be a captain in the Army someday, okay? So 2.5 GPA, which is not difficult. All right. What's your, what's your major? You're looking at like biochem or something, did you say, or? Um, criminal justice. Criminal justice. Okay, good. You're a, you're a, that, I was a political science guy. Not, I'm not a math guy. Um, um, so go ahead, Becca, did you want to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, uh, 
No, I know you've been working with your admission counselor. Um, I'm another one of the first year admission counselors at Hood. My name is Becca. And if you do have any questions about majors or other things um, and how they're partnering with ROTC, we definitely would be happy to um, help answer those. Um, I do want to just let you know, too, we are recording this session just so we have this information to go back to. Um, so just yeah. wanted to give you a heads up with that. I think she's really hoping that I don't say some curse words or something <laughs> to come, come back and uh, get me. Um, I have to be on my be best behavior now. No, but uh, in your packet, there's some probably some information on getting yourself medically qualified, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're all in a little bit of a quandary right now because, you know, doctor's appointments and things like that. Just do as much of that as you can. Okay. So we talked about academics, 2.5 GPA. And that is in the term and in the, we will validate your, your scholarship in July of 2021. So that when you get back in August of 2021, all you have to do is sign the paperwork. Okay. Uh, medical qualification, the Army will send you based on your zip code, home or record. Where, where are you from again? Are you? I'm from Clinton, Maryland. Okay, so Clinton, Maryland, um, it might be a storefront eye doctor that you've driven past all your life that the Army will direct you to go get an eye exam and then a doctor's office. Uh, you're not going to go to like Fort Meade or anything like that. These are contract doctors that'll get you. You'll fill out some paperwork and then we'll get you through the wickets of becoming medically qualified, okay? And the other thing that you absolutely can affect is physical fitness. So you said you've come up and done some PT. So mm -hmm. you pass a PT test, um, they're pretty much the big wickets to get through to make that 3AD scholarship validated so to get those, those three years, okay? And there is precedent, I will tell you this, for if you come in and crush your first semester at Hood, and when I say crush, like three, seven or better, we've, we've changed some scholarships to three and a half year based on performance in the first semester, okay? Um, we'll issue you uniforms. Captain Harant, they have a supply room down there. You may have seen it or it's, it's right in there with their, you know, that you know, little gym. Um, yeah, but what an asset he is having been a product of the, of the program there. Um, I think he graduated. I've been here. This is my, this will be my 10th year here, which I can't even believe. Uh, but I think he graduated right before I got here. So, and so our Bolwell teaches our, our juniors. Um, so that's a big year. Um, and you know, this year's junior class is going, you know, probably going to be told they're not going to summer training and that's just, you know, it's a hiccup, but everybody, you know, this is uncharted territory. Uh, for all of us, you know, never did I think, thank gosh, my daughter's home too, because I, she had me getting all this stuff. Uh, you know, she was, she was over here, like telling me what to do here. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So you're, if someone at Hood looks at you next August or next September, they will not be able to tell any difference between you being a three-year winner or a four-year winner, because you're going to have the same uniforms. We're going to expect you to be at everything. Because, you know, that's where you're, you're, you're making it, you're making a name for Noah Turner so that Master Sergeant Bolwell and Captain Harant look at Lieutenant Colonel Rodriguez and be like, oh yeah, absolutely. You know, he's got a, whatever the GPA is, he's passed the PT test. So they're all out in the army right now and they've, they're in a two-year program. So there's going to be three, you know, non-commissioned officers that will come in and become cadets. And that's going to change the face of the program. And what, a, what an asset they've been out there doing it for, in some cases, 10, over 10 years. So these are smart soldiers. You know, they're not infantrymen or anything like that. They're medical specialists and not that infantrymen are, don't get me, you know, <laughs> I was, you know. Um, so that's going to really be a big asset for the hood program. They'll do everything that you're doing uh, as far as PT and doing all the tactics and stuff like that. But, just so you know, the tactics that we're going to do, we're not training you how to be an infantryman. We're using a tactical situation to draw out leadership traits and characteristics. That's what we want to see. Are you resilient? Can you communicate? Can you create a positive environment? Can you follow? Because, you know, junior leaders have to follow, and that's a, that's a tough task for some. But, uh, you know, we're looking forward to having you. Um, 
you know, I just saw a picture from a couple guys from alumni from Hood, and they're standing around the basketball court there, and it says Hood College. And a lot of these guys and gals are out there as captains and, uh, you know, first lieutenants and stuff like that. So um, we like to have fun. A lot of our fun activities usually come in the spring. So this year, our military ball, our commissioning ceremonies, and that's just, you know, it's a shame, but that's something we do. Resiliency and, you know, positive attitude, you got to kind of pick it up and, you know, we're all doing that right now. I mean, look at this technology. I mean, I'm a dinosaur and I'm, I'm zooming right now. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom to me was a, was a TV show that came on at like four o'clock in the afternoon after Sesame Street. But, uh, that's before your guys' times too, right? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, though. The show was called Zoom. Yes. Yeah. So we're zooming here. So, um, any anything else? Any other questions? Or keep up the contact with Captain Harant and Mass Arm Bolwell, though. I mean, that's a that's great. You've already met them. Um, as far as so, I know Advanced Camp. Well. I know advanced camp is probably going to be canceled this year, but will it be any different next year for my year when I eventually um, get to Well, you won't go to, to advanced camp until between your junior and senior year. So that's, that's three years down the road. So hopefully everything's back to normal by then. Now, could it change? Here, what they're talking about doing right now is moving the, ta or the tasks from advanced camp back to the campus. So the seniors, instead of being like all chilling and grilling this year, might have to do some things that they didn't do at camp this summer. Um, so I think everything's probably going to be tweaked and be a little bit different moving forward in, in, in many, you know, look at the, I mean, I'm sure the admissions staffs might, might use and leverage technology more in the future because it's going to be cost savings and there's all kinds of, you know, so, I wouldn't worry about it, um, <clears throat> you know, because it's 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 pretty far down the road. If if we get back to normal, whatever that looks like in the future, because I think it's going to be a new normal. Um, you know, collective. You know, who knows? You know, who knows? But uh, I wouldn't really. That's above my pay grade too. So let we'll just let the let the people that are earning the big money make those decisions, and we'll uh, fight the good fight down here. Uh, now, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the other things that um, cadets do, because uh, once you sign a contract, you're, you're eligible to do a whole bunch of other things. Um, the schools, airborne school, air assault school, you know, jump out of an airplane, repel out of a helicopter, <clears throat> go to internships. Um, we've had cadets intern with NASA. We've had cadets intern with um, the um, Med Army Medical Command. Um, that's all getting kind of pushed off the, off the table this year. But if everything goes as I think it will in years to come, you'll be eligible for, for that and, and more. So the, the guys that had air assault slots this summer, we just found out anything that was happening in May is not happening. So uh, we had some kids going to be going overseas to Hawaii and Germany to train with real army units, not happening. And that's just the, that's the nature of the beast. So, um, but here's how you get all of those schools. It's not, we don't get, we don't get as many slots as we want. And it's back to those three things again, GPA, physical fitness, because GPA and physical fitness are something that people can hang their hat on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so you put yourself in a, your, your vote counts more if you're bargaining from a position of strength. So that 300 PT test and that 3.2 or better you know, puts you in good stead. You know, we get guys like, I want to go to airborne school. It's like, dude, you can't even pass a PT test. We're not going to put you out in front and represent Hood College or the Green Terror Battalion if you're not the, you know, the cream of the crop. Okay. So uh, I have a question for uh, Miss Reitemeyer. Am I saying that right? Very close. Reitemeyer. Reitemeyer. Yes. <laughs> Um, I have a question. As far as um, for a minute, um, this kind of, I was kind of thinking of double majoring in criminal justice and political science. Mm -hmm. um, what, what steps do I need to take to make that happen? 
Yeah, so great question. So you're going to have until the end of your second year to officially declare a major. Um, so whatever major you put on your application, we're not going to hold you to that. Um, so you once a student's deposited and they're assigned a student email account, you'll be getting emails there from academic services about placement tests and class registration. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to indicate sort of your area of interest. And so when an advisor meets with you, they'll look at those and help you start to select classes for this upcoming fall. Double majoring is very possible at Hood. I always recommend if you're thinking about double majoring to connect with professors from each department you're looking at, um, just because we love having you here, but we also love to see you go. And so to keep things within that four year framework um, so that you can then go out and do those things that you're getting your degree in, um, the departments will just be able to let you know if maybe classes might satisfy requirements for both majors or if there's very certain semesters you might need to make sure to take certain things. So it's definitely possible to double major. Um, it would just be coordinating with each department and then once you declare a major you would just declare as a double major. Okay. Thank so. you. Oh, you're very welcome. Does that make sense? I know there's a lot of moving pieces as you're kind of yeah, thinking no, about I'm next fall. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah, anything else about preparing for the fall, about ROTC and what that looks like the first year? It sounds like you've gotten some really good practical experience on campus already. Mm -hmm. um, I got a chance to shadow um, one of the Hood cadets. She took me through her entire day of ROTC, her class, her regular classes. So it was a pretty enlightening experience and she gave me, she's also wanted to, she's also a major in criminal justice. Mm -hmm. So she was able to give me some tips on what classes to take and um, just how, if I do decide that she, she told me, she, I asked her about double major and she said, she actually told me what you just told me to mm -hmm. coordinate, see what classes, see what classes count for both and see what you can just meet with your professors in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say with ROTC, we have students that are doing ROTC who are in the honors program, who are doing rigorous course loads, who are doing internships, who are student athletes. So um, definitely a lot of students are balancing ROTC with a lot of different things. And um, you may have more information about this, um, Mr. Famoletti, but just there, it is very doable. Uh, yeah. I. You know, we always try to tell the young cadets, um, in fact, we, I used to teach freshmen and um, time management is a skill that um, is, is very important in college because there are, there are these things called black holes and that's part of growing up too, okay? There's not going to be mom and dad or, you know, significant others saying, turn your lights on, turn your lights off, study now, don't study now. But everything we talked about earlier about making yourself, making your vote count more. If you want an internship, even if it's an internship outside of the army internship, quality counts. It's that, it's that, it's the student athlete leader that's gonna get things that, are, that happen. So I'm not saying that you have to spend every waking minute of Hood College and that's not what it's designed for. That's why there's all kinds of extracurriculars and things like that, but it's, it's you need to balance academics, social life, and some people get it and it comes very easy and very natural. You can be an athlete, a student and a cadet and be very successful. I mean, I, I fall back on, we have cadet Laura Vetter, you may have met her. You know, she's a nursing student maintaining about a 3.9 GPA, plays basketball and is, a, is one of our best cadets. And uh, you know, there's others down there at Hood that, you know, that seem to, it comes very easy to them. Cadet Wallace, you know, he's, he's a, you know, uh, it just comes very natural. Other people, and it's human nature, they struggle. And, you know, there's some cadets at some other campuses that I guarantee you are not, are failing in the time management because they're putting all their eggs in the wrong baskets. And that's reflected in their 1.7 GPAs and, uh, you know, um, loss of scholarship. And to me, I, you know, there are enough people at that campus that want you to succeed. They want you, like like Becca said, they want you to graduate on time and, and leave, okay? There's tutors, there's there's peer tutors, there are academic advisors. And if, if 
if you start to struggle, you need to reach out because what people tend to do is they're embarrassed and um, these people get paid a lot of money to, to do that, to see you succeed. My daughter goes to college at Carnegie Mellon and she goes to every tutoring session available if she can make it. Why not? You know, make sure that, you know, she's a civil engineer. I can't even, I can't even pronounce some of the courses she's taken, but uh, you know, she's in there taking, I don't even know what a differential equation is, but uh, you know, she goes to tutoring physics, you know, um, and she, you know, that's, that's just, so I just leave you with that. You can do it all. There's plenty of time. Uh, an ROTC, I absolutely guarantee you will not be a big time suck for you. The, the PT in the morning might take an adjustment, but that, you know what else it is? It's a stress reliever too. You get out there with like-minded people and work out and, you know, get your blood running and, you know, listen to Bullwell scream and holler at you. Um, and that's, you know, that's, you'll, that'll become second nature. Okay. Um, so good question though. Uh, trying to think of more questions that I would yeah, have. You got, you, you were hoping there'd be like 10 other guys on here with you kind of deflected. You're getting like the personal treatment here. Yeah. <laughs> um, As far as um, this is from Miss Wright Meyer, as far as scheduling my classes go, is how early can I start that, or is it a specific time? So, uh, I'm trying to remember the most recent update I had. So later this spring, um, deposited students will be getting an email um, in the next month or two um, that will have more information about the placement test that I mentioned. There are three of those. Um, one in math, one in English, and one in foreign language. They're all on our website, so you don't need to schedule a time to um, come in, which wouldn't be possible right now. Um, but they're all online. Once those are completed, you'll be able to register for classes. We have several different, um, we call them advising days, that will happen throughout, mostly like they're scattered throughout June, and then I think last year we had one in early July. Um, and that's when you would meet with an advisor and they would sit down and schedule your classes with you. So you should know by the middle of the summer what your schedule is going to be. Um, about early July is when you'll have the opportunity to fill out the housing survey. Um, and then you would find out your roommate assignment, your room assignment towards the end of July, get their contact information so you can be in touch with them, um, have those conversations about, okay, are we gonna bring a mini fridge, microwave, that sort of thing. Um, and then move in will be towards the ends of August. All of our first year incoming students move in um, on a Thursday and then returning students move in that Saturday. Um, so, you still have a pretty good chunk of the summer that there's nothing that you need to come to campus for um, that is yours if you're looking at um, working, conditioning, um, whatever your summer would have in it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, I think I think Captain Harant may have joined us. Yes. I did, sorry about that. I had <laughs> computer issues. And I still can't get my video to work, so sorry about that. <laughs> Man, this old this old guy got it figured out there, <laughs> Travis. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you have it during our conference on Thursday. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, but Noah said he's met you and Sarm Bowell. Yes, uh, he's yes. a he's the three AD winner who committed off the off the January board. Okay. So, uh, you know, just asking some questions, some good questions, and Becca and Amy are just telling them about like hood stuff, um, <laughs> double majors, and things like that. So, uh -huh. you know, excited to have him. I told him he was our first, our first solid uh, commit um, off that Jan board. So, um, yeah, I and I want to say, hey, Noah, you've been in contact with some of the other cadets. Uh, to get a feel of 
what the cadet world is at Hood, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, do you have any questions about any of that? Have they? I'm pretty sure Cadet Wallace is giving you a lot of information and uh, giving you the way the way around of everything. So hopefully, uh, he's been a resource to reach out to. He has. Um, so I do have a question. So, um, how does, so I know there's two instructors at Hood. So how, so who teaches the first years and who teaches the upperclassmen or is it, does it rotate on a, on a base, on a basis? So as it stands right now, I teach the, the freshman and sophomore uh, classes. Uh, Master Arm Bowell teaches the MS3, which is your junior year. And then, uh, Colonel Rodriguez teaches the, uh, senior class so for freshman and sophomore year pretty much everything you do will be at hood um i would say in a normal month maybe once to twice a month we may get the battalion together at one of the schools to do some other activity uh, whether that be sports or a, a ruck march or a run or a pt test um, by junior year, 99% of cadets are contracted. And we usually have at that time about 20 to 24 cadets from the three schools. So that class, your junior year and senior year will rotate campus to campus to campus. So Mass Arm Bowell will teach at Hood one, uh, I guess it's Wednesday evenings, right, Captain Morant? Yes, Wednesdays. And yeah, I, so, I want to say this senior year's changing to Wednesdays also. Yeah, so Wednesday evenings because we're when we we deconflict the schedules, the best time to do it is is in the evenings. So Wednesday evenings from six to nine is when our juniors and our seniors meet. Um, and by that time, there's enough usually privately owned vehicles to get people back and forth. Um, you know. Folks from Mount St. Mary's especially like it to be at someplace else because there's more restaurant options and things like that. Mount St. Mary's is in Emmitsburg, um, kind of out in the in the sticks there, if you will. So Frederick and and Westminster have the a few more options for dining and things like that. So that's how we run it. But PT will will for the most part be at the camp at all three campuses unless we're doing some special event. Um, and freshmen and sophomores, we teach at all three schools. Okay. Um, I really have no further questions. For an incoming student who is looking to prepare over the summer for the physical conditioning, for other things, are there any um, tips or advice you all would have for a student getting ready to start ROTC next year? Uh, sure. Go ahead, Travis. So, Noah, are you following our uh, Facebook and Instagram pages? Yes. Okay. So, if you're following those, um, that will that will be your start. Uh, we do post uh, physical uh, fitness stuff uh, on there, uh, and a lot of people. And I, I I see it every day how everybody is doing the challenges. You know, showing how far they run, how well they run, you know, their times and stuff like that. So. That's one way that we're getting after the physical training portion of it. So as, if you're doing things like that, uh, it will better prepare you for the, uh, the upcoming months. Okay. Um, and if a student uh, is interested in ROTC, when they're scheduling their classes for their first semester, um, is that something they should communicate to their advisor? Are there any classes that they should definitely be taking for the ROTC program that first fall semester? Yes, so they'll have, uh, and I'm pretty sure no one knows about this. Uh, the MSCI uh, 101 course, um, he'll have to take. Most advisors uh, do know uh, about the class that they have to take. Um, I know I've worked with Ashley and she's sent a, a note out to most advisors once I came on board. Uh, so advisors should be tracking and then as well as the individual once we talk to them. And Becca, that he, Noah has to take that class because he's a scholarship winner. 
right. you see that isn't a scholarship winner, that's the entry point, really. There's no, there's no reapplication or anything like that. If they're coming to Hood and they, they come into Military Science 101, they're a cadet and they'll sit right next to Noah Turner. And if, they're, if they want to get on to the OML for a campus-based scholarship, I don't know if you guys know, but did you know Emily Velasquez won a two-year scholarship? We gave it to her like a week ago. Uh, I, she's, a, she's a two-year winner at, at Hood, you know, and we all knew she was the top of our OML and we knew it would happen. So, uh, you know, she started taking one to get to campus. And you can enter at other times too. Don't think that's the only way to enter. But uh, so if a, if, if a prospect is asking you, how do I get into ROTC and they're a true freshman, Military Science 101. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, so in kind of in a vein of being a resource, I know, Amy, you're working with transfer students. Is there anything for a student transferring in um, that either of you would advise um, to be aware of, like if they're coming in this fall? Um. <clears throat> Okay, so if they're coming in as a transfer student, the real question is what year group are they gonna be in? Are you gonna call them, if you were gonna call them an incoming junior um, in, a, in a typical summer, we could have sent them to a basic camp at Fort Knox, Kentucky and gotten them credit for the first two years of ROTC. Uh, we could still try to you know, work something out with, in these interesting times, but a graduate student, a pure graduate student too, could come and take the undergraduate 300 and 400 level ROTC and in two years of graduate school, you know, when he gets the master's degree, he, he'd commission, he or she would commission with the, the, his cohort. Um, if, a, if a student comes in as a sophomore and has six semesters remaining, they could double up curriculum, they could take Military Science 101 and 201 in the fall and 102 and 202 in the spring, where well, that's called compression. So we can do a lot of really, I've, I've had sophomores take 400 level classes sometimes because we, we got it, you know, sometimes you have to put square pegs in a round hole. So there's, there's, there's ways to skin those cats. Now, if they're, if they're prior service, even in the National Guard or the Army Reserve, they have credit for those first two years of ROTC. So they become very unique in that transfer realm. So they're a, they're a very unique set of, you know, veterans, especially, because a lot of veterans come and they're like, I don't want anything to do with it. And then they're like, well, well, hold on, why not? I've had the training. Um, so, and I know, I know Travis and folks down there, Master Sergeant Bolwell and, and Martinelli ahead of him tried to really cultivate the, um, the veteran community um, and I'm, I'm here to tell you that that asset you have at Fort Detrick right there, if money starts to dry up on the scholarship side of things, this green to gold program with those, those quality soldiers, because the MOS is the occupational specialties at Fort Detrick and Fort Meade are unique to the Army. They're not infantrymen and, and field artillerymen. They are medical specialists, signal specialists, so they tend to be very bright. So as evidenced by the three that are coming in there that are getting their master's degrees. But as you can see now, there's a pretty vibrant um, and diverse military community in and around Hood um, with Fort Detrick right down the road. Um, that's a great resource. Um, and as you're thinking uh, political science, science and long criminal justice in terms of resources in the area, being not very far from DC, um, being near Fort Detrick in Frederick itself, there's a lot of different um, opportunities to get some of those hands-on experiences that let you take those things you're talking about and learning in the classroom and really get to apply them. Um, but yeah, there's also a lot of opportunities to engage with people kind of um, at all different levels of military involvement and different places in their military careers. So it's, it's pretty cool. Noah, we also have, um, well, at least in the fall semester and starting in the spring, we did have like military coffee hours that was open to ROTC students, active duty graduate, and even veteran students. Um, and we plied you guys with like coffee and donuts, <laughs> which is not great for the, for the PRT, but... <laughs> 
everyone loves donuts. Um, so that's something to look forward to once a month is just to come hang out, just chill. Um, usually a lot of the, the military community is there. ROTC is definitely there because they love the donuts. Um, so you'll probably be voluntold to go, <laughs> but we'd love to have you there. Awesome. Uh, um, we just uh, got a, our PT session approved for credit. So I don't think I've told Becca or Amy this yet. So uh, when you talk to your advisor, I will have to shoot you the, the course number, uh, but you can sign up for that class and actually that'll go towards your PE credit that you have to have for Hood College. Okay. Uh, and also, you're, I mean, you're going to be doing it anyway, so you might as well get credit for it. Good stuff. Becca and Amy, I will send you, you that course number so you have it for your reference. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we do have just about uh, five more minutes or so. I know you've asked lots of great questions, Noah. We've given you lots of information, but is there anything else that um, ROTC, that first year experience, would be really helpful for you to know? It sounds um, like you're pretty well connected, too. Um, yes, actually, uh, I just thought of a question. Um, <laughs> is there any, top, is there any um, topics that I'm going to learn that I could get jump started on now? Oh, that's a good, uh, good question. Uh, we have a reading list. If you want to look at a couple books um, over, you know, the summer, uh, any kind of leadership styles or um, there's, there's tons of stuff out there. We don't want to inundate you with stuff, but uh, there's, you know, there's the Colonel's got a few books that he really likes, you know, so nothing saying if you want to start reading a couple books, we were soldiers once and young is a book by um, Galloway, uh, Black Hawk Down. Um, mm. So I think if you look at our Facebook page, you might see some of that stuff percolating too. Okay. But enjoy yourself too. Once we're allowed outside again, you know, enjoy your summer too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And please for to tell Peyton, I appreciate the, uh, so uh, and I guess we're going to do this for the rest Tuesdays in April or, or maybe into May, depending on the, um, I guess, turnout or. Mm, yeah, I was going to say, I, I know at least April, this is our accepted students month. Okay. Um, so yes, there'll be other ROTC sessions. Noah, there'll also be some of those other sessions. I believe the schedule's up actually on our visit page. Um, so definitely check that out. It's a good way to get to meet other hood students. Um, I know you had a pretty personalized session today, um, but also to get information from around campus. Okay. Um, one last thing. Um, those um, committed scholar, those um, other committed guys that are coming to hood, um, is there any possible way I could get their contact information and reach out? Uh, yeah, once uh, once things start to get a little bit gelled up here with yays and nays, and I will send a note out to all of you guys, and I'll CC, I'll send it out to Hood and CC all this, you know, that you're going to be classmates and do the same for, for the other schools. Um, I will certainly do that. That's not a secret. You also have access to um, schools app. And if you don't have access, you can let us know. That's pretty much an accepted students platform. It's like the first phase of Facebook back in the day. Um, it's that old. <laughs> yeah, it's but, old school. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's way old school. Um, but that's where you can connect with all accepted students. So if you just like go on there and put a status saying, hey, I'm one of the ROTC people. Is there anyone out there like me? You guys can swap Instagrams and Snapchats and get to mm -hmm. know each other early. It's mm -hmm. called Schools App? Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. You should have gotten an email if you didn't reach out uh, to Steve and let him know and he'll make sure that you get that link. Yeah, he's um, Poncho in charge of that. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's a great way. And um, if you encounter any ROTC students who are not following the ROTC Instagram, you can always encourage them to, because it sounds like that's a great way to stay on track with training. Um, so yeah, that's a, another resource for you. You can too if you'd like. Hmm? You can follow our Instagram. <laughs> I do so that's that's kind of where I've been getting my workouts from no that, that that's a good start but 
Awesome. Well, thank you all for being involved. Um, same time next week. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll continue to get lots of information from uh, the admission office, from other offices around campus. Noah, just making sure you have all the information you need to be ready for the fall. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Be checking your Hood email account. Well, oh, thank you. All right, Noah, we'll okay. talk to you later. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Great. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Have a good day.